Good morning, Philippines! Good morning, mga kababayan! Nandito na naman ulit ang programang Kalusugan Mo, Ingatan Mo. For today's episode, we're going to interview some special guests. The top doctors coming from the biggest hospital in the country, Southern Philippines Medical Center. We've been asking them if they can spare us time for the show. And I'm happy that they gave us a time for the short interview, despite of their busy work. We know that doctors are always busy, especially if they have so many patients to attend to. And now, let's welcome our beautiful doctors, Dr. Christy Ozoa Inoho and Dr. Pulin Oschad. Dr. Christy Inoho graduated from the University of the Philippines. She completed the degree of obstetrics gynecology. Dr. Pulin Oschad graduated from Cambridge University Taking a Master of Science in Clinical Medicine. Good morning, Dr. Please don't call the I'm fine, Ms. Rattan. Don't call the name, Mr. Good, Ms. Rattan. It's good to hear that you're both doing fine. Isn't it tiring to be a doctor, especially when you have many patients? It's quite tiring sometimes, but this is the work that you do, so it is the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you for attending this. Small talk show. Despite your very best time, you choose to accept our invitation and short interview. Thank you so much. Last week, we conducted a survey on what topics our viewers would like to talk about this week via our Facebook page. And the Tara, most of the viewers and public papers say that if we can discuss the current issue nowadays about early pregnancy, abortion, responsible parenting, children sleeping on the street and suffering from hunger, and how to control the overpopulation. So, what can you say about this? Yes, that issue is the most common for now, especially in the early pregnancy abortion and overpopulation. I've experienced that to my one patient that at the age of 16, she's only pregnant, but she's not ready for it, so she decided to abort it. I know that many teenagers too are experiencing that kind of situation. I suggest that if you're not ready to get pregnant or bear a child, please use protection or we call it safe sex. For those teenagers who are seeking to do sexual intercourse with their boyfriends or girlfriends nor loved ones, think first of what is the possible outcome in your future and your studies. If you are ready and responsible of that effect of your future. Last week, we conducted a survey on what topics our viewers would like to talk about this week via our Facebook page. And Dr. Tara, most of the viewers and public papers say that if we can discuss the current issue nowadays about early pregnancy, abortion, responsible parenting, children sleeping on the street and suffering from hunger, and how to control the overpopulation. So, what can you say about this? Yes, that issue is the most common for now, especially in the early pregnancy. Abortion and overpopulation. I've experienced that to my one patient that at the age of 16, she's only pregnant, but she's not ready for it, so she decided to abort it. I know that many teenagers too are experiencing that kind of situation. I suggest that if you're not ready to get pregnant or bear a child, please use protection or we call it safe sex. For those teenagers who are seeking to do sexual intercourse with their boyfriends or girlfriends nor loved ones, think first of what is the possible outcome in your future and your studies. If you are ready and responsible of that effect of your future. Yeah, that's the most important things before you decide to do sexual intercourse. To those people who are already have parents and planning to never get pregnant again but still doing sexual intercourse, I suggest you to use protection or contraceptives. Good idea, Doctor. But can we discuss first about contraceptives? Just to give information to those people watching us right now and for those seeking for information about preventing pregnancy. Yeah, sure. Contraceptive nowadays is very common, especially to those people who don't want to get unexpected pregnancy. Contraceptives are also known as birth control. This is a medicine or device to prevent pregnancy. You're right, Dr. Reno, but there are also contraceptives that can protect from HIV, STDs, and other diseases that can get through sexual intercourse. Oh. 
There are many diseases we can get through sex and intercourse, but there are two most common. First is HIV or the human immunodeficiency virus. It's a kind of virus that attacks our immune system. It can spread through sexual contact, illicit injection drug dose, or sharing needles, contact, contact with infected blood, childbirth, or breastfeeding, and protected sex, or the so-called sex without condom. But someone who has HIV is at very high risk for getting infected. Second is STDs, or the sexually transmitted diseases. In another term, STIs, or the sexually transmitted infections are infections that are passed from one person to another through sexual contact. They are usually spread during vaginal, oral, or anal sex. But sometimes, they can spread through other sexual contact involving the penis, vagina, mouth, or anus. This is because some STDs like herpes and HPV are spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact. HIV and STD or STI vaccine because there are some STDs can spread from a pregnant person to the baby, either during pregnancy or when giving birth. Other ways that STDs may be spread include during breastfeeding, through blood transfusion, or by sharing needles. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that information, Dr. Laura. Now, let's talk about contraceptives. According to Dr. Inoha, contraceptives is also known as a birth control. Can you explain us the birth control methods? Many elements need to be considered by women, men or couples at any given point of their lifetimes when choosing the most appropriate contraceptive method. These elements include safety, effectiveness, availability, and acceptability. Voluntary informed choice of contraceptive methods is an essential during principle, during principle, and contraceptive counseling, when applicable, might be an important contributor to the successful use of contraceptive methods. In choosing a method of contraception to allow protection for a simultaneous risk of HIV and other STDs, also. It should be considered. Although hormonal contraceptives and IUDs are highly effective preventing pregnancy, they do not protect against STD, including HIV. Consistent and correct use of the male lactose condom reduces the risk of HIV infection and other STDs, including chlamydial infection, gonococcal infection, and trichomonasis. I need to process first your explanation in my mind. <laughs> then I have another question raised. What is the impact of using contraceptives? The most common side effects are spotting or bleeding with the periods. This is the more common with progestin only pills. Sore breeze, nausea, or headaches. But this usually go away after two or three months. And this don't happen to everyone who takes the pill. Birth control shouldn't make you feel sick or uncomfortable. But if you keep having side effects that bother you after using the pill for three months, talk with your nurse or doctor about trying another brand of pill or another birth control method. But don't stop taking the pill without starting any method, or you won't be protected from pregnancy. Now, please tell us what are the different types of contraceptives. There are different types of contraceptives for birth control. In viral methods, we have a female and male condom, contraceptive sponge, spermicide, and diaphragm and cervical pump. This kind of birth control can also help us to prevent an STDs or STIs or HIV. In hormonal methods, we have a oral contraceptives or the pill, contraceptive pump, vaginal ring, injectable birth control, and implant. In long-acting reversible contraceptives or LARCs, we have an intratoral device or IED, and in the inter sterilization, we have a tubal ligation and vasectomy. Oh, so we have many different types of contraceptives. Is it okay that the teenagers can use contraceptives or birth control? Actually, my answer for that question is no. For me, contraceptive or 
Alberta Jones for those married before only, and couples who are, who are planning not to get pregnant or not to be pregnant again. But as I notice nowadays, many teenagers are buying contraceptives at the drugstore since most of it can be brought over the counter. Remember that contraceptives also have negative side effects. I agree with you, Dr. Astal. Well, thank you for the opinion, Dr. Astal. Another question is what I ask is what is the most effective form of birth control or contraceptives? Abstinence is the only birth control of 100% effective. It means you will never have sexual intercourse. It also the only way to protect yourself from STDs. Yeah, obviously abstinence is the only birth control that is 100% effective. Even for the most motivated couples, this can be difficult to maintain. So, it's important to have a backup form of birth control in mind but birth control only works when you use it correctly and consistently. Am I right, Doctora? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the presentation, Doc. Okay, let's have the last two questions. How is the contraceptive measured? And what is the importance of contraception measured in our life and community? Contraception effectiveness is measured by how many women will get pregnant within the year by using that method. And the importance of contraceptives in our life and community as the prevention of denied and intended pregnancies helps to lower maternal ill, health, and the number of pregnancy-related deaths. Now, I fully understand things about contraceptives. I hope that our viewers have learned a lot in today's episode. Thank you, Dr. Pauline and Dr. Christy, for sharing us this information and attending this passion. Thank you so much. You're welcome.